Hello, and welcome to this introduction of Kemp's Ansible module. This is Kurt Young, Senior Product Strategy Manager at Kemp, and in this demonstration, I'd like to showcase the components that make up Kemp's automation and configuration management strategy, as well as showing how Ansible fits into this approach. There are a few components in this demonstration that are leveraged to support Kemp's Ansible module. First, as shown in the center, is Kemp 360 Central. This is the centralized management platform for your application delivery fabric. It plays a crucial role in providing configuration management, visibility, control, and licensing to deliver that always-on application experience in your organization. Then to the right are all of the Kemp Loadmasters that are managed under Kemp 360 Central. The Ansible module communicates directly with configuration management components of Kemp 360 Central, which then orchestrates the changes to the downstream application delivery controllers, or ADCs. This allows administrators and application owners to automate all the changes in one place, rather than needing to interact with the individual ADCs that may be distributed across different data centers and clouds. Let's start off having a look at Kemp 360 Central web interface. In this environment, I'm running several dozen load balancers distributed over different clouds and data centers. This environment is also using Kemp's metered licensing, which drives that per app ADC model. I'm looking to create a virtual service on a loadmaster in my New York data center. Since it's a new application, I spun up a new loadmaster called Mila NY PLM. I'm going to use one of the sample Ansible playbooks we provide, which will publish this application on port 443. In this environment, I'm using a clean install of CentOS 7, but any Linux distribution that supports Ansible will do the job. So the first thing I need to do is, well, install Ansible. So with that, I'll use the sudo yum install Ansible command and type y to continue with the installation. And next, I'm going to install Python requests, which is the Python HTTP library. And once again, I'll type Y to complete the installation. Now that I have those components installed, I want to copy the Kemp Ansible module onto my system. I've already downloaded the module from the Kemp website, and I'll just go ahead and use WinSCP to get the necessary directories copied. I've already created a directory at our home called Configuration but feel free to copy them elsewhere if you choose. So let's grab the Kemp Ansible directory. This one consists of the library and the module utils and the examples directory which holds some of those sample playbooks. Okay, now that I've Ansible installed and I've copied the Kemp module onto the system, I just need to provide a connection between the two. This way Ansible knows where to find the module to run the playbooks. There's several different ways to do this across the different Linux distributions. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and modify profile to add those necessary export valuables so they're system-wide. So using sudo vi and then pointing to uh, slash etc slash profile, I'll go ahead and scroll to the bottom, hit insert, and enter the following two lines. Then just hit escape colon wq to save it. Now for this to take effect, I just need to log out and log back in. Now I'll just run export to confirm that they're listed. Okay, now just uh, two more things to do. I just need to edit the Ansible host file to allow the running of the playbooks on the local host. For that, I'll just run sudo bi and then etc slash ansible slash hosts. Once again, I'll scroll to the bottom, hit insert, and then type localhost between two brackets. And then underneath that, provide the IP address of this machine. Hit escape and then save and close the file. The final step is to generate SSH keys to allow Ansible to run the playbooks. Without taking this step, an error will be generated stating failure to connect to SSH. So I'll just go ahead and type SSH keygen. Go ahead and accept the defaults. Once that completes, I'll just use the SSH copy ID command to install the keys. I'll type yes, and then provide the root password for the system. 
Okay, now that all the prerequisites have been installed, we can start with the Ansible playbook. In order to run this playbook, as illustrated earlier, we need to authenticate to Chem360 Central. In order to do this, we need to obtain an API key. So using curl, we can run the following command providing the admin credentials to get access to this key. So I'll go ahead and copy this out to use in my playbook. Now I'm just going to change the directory to that slash home configuration examples directory where I have those sample playbooks. Doing an LS, I see there's two samples, a medium config.yaml, which includes some advanced configuration, including some content rules, and a small config.yaml, which will just create a virtual service and some real servers. Since my application is very simple, consisting of just a single virtual service and a real server, I'll go ahead and open up the small config.yaml to modify it for my environment. The YAML file is broken up into a few different sections. At the top, we're able to identify where to run the playbook. And in this case, we're going to run it locally using that local host, which was created in that host file earlier. Next is where we can modify the variables that are used in this playbook for this environment, providing things like the Kemp 360 central IP address, username, the API key we generated, as well as the details for the load master we want to modify that's managed under Kemp 360 central. And last, are the actual tasks that are going to be run using those variables provided. I, of course, have the ability to modify one or all of these to get the results I'm looking for in the playbook. So I'll go ahead and save the YAML file. And now I could just run ansible-playbook and specify the YAML file name. OK, it looks like everything connected and ran successfully. Now. Let's go back to Chem360 Central, go to my Mila NY PLM, refresh, and we see the newly added virtual service and real server listed. Now, I could always go back and rerun the playbook to perhaps scale this out to add some additional real servers or make other modifications throughout the lifecycle of the application. So with this, I invite you to download the Camp Ansible module and try it out in your environment to deliver that always-on application experience. For more information, check us out at camp.ax. Thanks for watching.